We have by now all heard about the importance of sunscreen for protecting your skin from sun damage, but it also has proven skin rejuvenation benefits too, which are less well known. Daily use of sunscreen has actually been shown in studies to reverse some of the signs of aging on our skin, positively affecting skin texture, clarity and pigmentation. And scientists have offered the theory that by protecting the skin from photo damage, which accounts for 90% of skin aging, we give ourselves a chance to focus Focus on the day job and get on with the business of repair and renewal. So that's why when anyone asks me what I think the most powerful anti-aging skincare product is, I say sunscreen by a mile. Now, there are two types of sunscreen. There's mineral, also called physical sunscreens, which typically include zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide and they sit on the surface of the skin to act as a shield. And there are chemical ones that are designed to sink into your skin and have more of a sponge-like effect by absorbing UV rays. These days, I tend to only use mineral sunscreens with zinc oxide, my filter of choice. And today I'm gonna to explain why and run you through some of my top product choices across the price ranges. So why do I prefer to use zinc oxide based sunscreens? Well, as many of you know, there is a little bit of debate around the safety of chemical sunscreens because it's been found that some of the chemicals used can make it into the bloodstream. Now, a lot of experts will explain that at the low levels involved, these chemicals should not be harmful to humans. And they make the point that the risk from skin cancer is much greater, which is why we wanna use sunscreen. For more information on this, I'll link to a discussion below with the dermatologist, Dr. Fane Fry, in which we go into much more detail about sunscreen ingredients and their safety, and why the FDA in the US has requested more data from the industry to further assess the evidence. But while that debate goes on, I decided to go with a mineral sunscreen and there are a few reasons why. So all of my favorite sunscreen products discussed today feature zinc oxide and some also contain titanium dioxide. And they're both naturally occurring minerals which have been found to have sun blocking properties. But zinc oxide is really the king of the mineral sunscreens because it's on its own considered broad spectrum, which is what we want in a sunscreen as it's effective against both UVA and UVB rays. But not only do we have to get our heads around the chemical versus mineral sunscreens, but now there's a further classification on the mineral ones where makers are talking about the minerals being either non-nano or nano. So you might see zinc oxide listed on the ingredients of your sunscreen as being in nano or non-nano form. So non-nano refers to particles that are larger in size, typically greater than 100 nanometers, whereas nano sized particles are smaller than 100 nanometers and are used in some sunscreens for their more transparent appearance. Some experts argue that non-nano zinc oxide particles, so those larger particles, have the edge in terms of sun protection because their larger size is better for blocking both UVA and UVB rays. And it's also been claimed that non-nano particles might be safer for marine life. But not all products even tell you whether they're using nano or non-nano zinc oxide particles, so it's not even always possible to tell. And at this point, I'm really just going on performance for my mineral sunscreen of choice. A major reason that I prefer zinc oxide based sunscreens is because it's a non-irritating ingredient and because I have slightly sensitive skin, I can happily include it in my daily routine without it having a drying or irritating effect. You don't have to worry about it making your eyes sting or anything like that. After all, zinc oxide is used in nappy rash cream, so it's known to have a soothing effect on skin. You'll also find zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in mineral makeup. And I've started using a mineral concealer and powder recently as well. And I figure that might give me some extra sun protection too. The other thing with mineral sunscreens is you can apply moisturizers and oils underneath them and they will just sit on top. Whereas with a chemical sunscreen, some skincare specialists suggest that you apply the sunscreen before your moisturizer so that the sunscreen can be more readily absorbed into the skin. As with most things in skincare, advice around that does vary, with other skin experts saying you can apply chemical sunscreens on top of moisturizer, but just let the oil or moisturizer fully absorb into the skin first. But the fact there is conflicting advice around that also pushes me towards the physical sunscreens. 
As for the downside of physical sunscreens, well, the fact they sit on top of the skin does mean they can leave a white cast. So as I run you through my favourite mineral sunscreens just now and how they perform, I'll also discuss the level of casting left on my skin after applying each one. So let's take a look at some of my favourite options across the price ranges and I will link to all the products I mentioned here below. So I'm going to start with the one I use day to day, which is Blue Lean's Blue Vado Sun Fix Sunscreen. It uses zinc oxide primarily with a little titanium dioxide, but also contains the chemical antioxidant methylene blue, which has been shown to both slow cell aging and has sun protective properties. So we could classify this as a smart sunscreen where you're not just getting protection, but there's an additional anti-aging ingredient included in the mix. Now, methylene blue is not recognized as a sunscreen by the FDA, so that ingredient cannot be included in the SPF rating, which is 21. However, Blue Lean say their own in-house testing puts the SPF at at least factor 30. So this is the sunscreen I use for day-to-day -day wear living in the UK, which is not exactly basking in sunshine most days. And I use this because I was very taken with the science behind Methylene Blue when I interviewed Blue Lean founder Dr. Can Chow, and I wanted to include it in my routine in some form. But more importantly, it's the sunscreen that feels most hydrating on my skin. I'm in my 50s, my skin can be dry, and so I like to use a lot of oil-based products these days. And this sunscreen includes a few essential oils, including lavender, bergamot, and grapefruit peel. And that might rule it out for some viewers who find they can react to essential oils. It has a very light fragrance, so it's not fragrance-free. You can smell those oils. But even though I have quite sensitive skin, I don't find it irritating. It does leave a bit of a cast, as most zinc oxide sunscreens do, but it does settle on my skin. I don't think it's a heavy cast, personally, and I find I don't need to do too much to cover it on my skin tone, but I do need to take it off my eyebrows with a sponge or they look a bit white. It costs £47 or $58 for 90 milliliters, so it's in the pricey range, and I pay export charges on top for delivery to the UK from the US. But I like it because it's quite a thick yet easily spreadable formula. So I find you don't actually need to apply a lot for good day-to-day -day coverage and my skin just seems to respond well to it. But if I'm going to be outdoors for longer periods of time on a very sunny day, I don't muck around and I switch up to something I know is going to give me big protection, which is the SPF 50 Baby Ganix face and body mineral sunscreen. It's around £27 for 177 milliliters, way cheaper in the US where it's about $16 for the same amount. It's unscented, contains mainly zinc oxide with a little titanium dioxide again. It's waterproof, non-sticky, non-greasy, non-irritating, but it's not as moisturizing as the Blue Lean and it's thicker and definitely leaves more of a cast. So this one for me is more about having that advanced protection rather than being a part of my daily skincare routine. And when I was looking up prices in the US, I see there's a sheer blend product available now in this range with just zinc oxide. It's a little harder to find here in the UK. There are a couple of sites selling it, but that one does sound worth trying. And I actually wish I'd spotted it sooner to have given it a try. When it comes to covering the cast from mineral sunscreens on your face, I find using a mineral powder foundation really helpful. And I use one from Swede, in the medium light colour. It's called a miracle powder and I wouldn't go quite that far but it is as light as a feather and so it sort of sits delicately on top of the sunscreen and takes any shine or cast out in just a few strokes and puts some colour back in. It's £38 or $45 but there are other lower cost mineral foundation powders out there so I'll link to a good option in the description below along with all the other products that I'm discussing here. And there are a few other mineral sunscreens that deserve a mention as well, starting with another smart sunscreen, which is a newer one from One Skin, available in a formula for the face and another one for the body. It uses non-nano zinc oxide, so those larger molecules. The face product is SPF 30, and you can buy it in either tinted or untinted formulas, and they have a helpful guide on their website that's worth taking a look at for the level of cast reported by customers of different skin tones using the tinted or untinted formula. 
It's a smart sunscreen because it contains OneSkin's proprietary peptide, which is really the cornerstone of the brand. And it's founded by female scientists who've been able to show impressive anti-aging benefits of this peptide in their own clinical trials. I've interviewed one of the founders and have spoken about One Skin Science a few times on the channel. So again, I will link to that interview for any of you who have missed it. The sunscreens are really nicely formulated. They're not drying, though I didn't find it particularly moisturizing either. It's unscented, it's very lightweight and more liquid in consistency. So it spreads easily and evenly and is one of the lowest on cast, I think, especially the tinted option. And the tint is quite dark. So if you have a very light skin tone, you might be better with the untinted. Conversely, if you have a darker skin tone, that would be the one to try. The downside, is price, it's £45 or $56 for just 40 millilitres. So that does put it at the upper end of the market. And the bottom line is, if you're a One Skin fan and money is no object, then this is a nice addition, which is gonna give you protection and another layer of the peptide. However, as this is a physical sunscreen, the absorption of that peptide is gonna be reduced in the sunscreen formula compared with the original moisturizer or topical supplement as they call it. So if you're choosing between one or the other, you'd likely be better going for the moisturizer and then using a lower cost sunscreen on top. Now one that behaves quite similarly in terms of its consistency and how it feels on the skin and how it applies is Aveeno's Calm and Restore Nourishing daily moisturizer in SPF 30. And it also has a bit of a super ingredient in it. It's typically around 15 pounds or $15 for 50 milliliters, making it much more affordable. And it's lightly tinted and relatively low on cast as well. It doesn't rub in quite as seamlessly as the One Skin formula, but it's close. It's unfragranced, uses nano zinc oxide, so those smaller particles, and it also includes titanium dioxide. I found it to be lightweight, but also moisturizing, non-greasy, maybe slightly sticky. The tint is very light, so I'm not sure how much of a difference that would make on darker skin tones, but at that price and considering the formula, it's definitely worth a try. It has a little antioxidant in there in the form of feverfew and of course the oatmeal extract for which Aveeno is known. And I think colloidal oatmeal is really one of the most underrated skin ingredients. And I'm not just saying that because I'm Scottish and we like our porridge oats. Aveeno moisturizer is the best I've ever used in terms of supporting the skin health of my family. It has consistently cleared up outbreaks of dermatitis and is my go-to and fallback if I have any skin sensitivity. And the oatmeal in it acts as a prebiotic for the bacteria on your skin, with studies showing it helps support the skin microbiome. So I would class this one not just as a cheaper mineral sunscreen, but as a smart sunscreen because of that super ingredient. And for affordability paired with performance, this would be my number one recommendation. Last couple of quick mentions, starting with one that is great for darker skin tones, though it has been hard to get here in the UK recently, and that's Verth's Guards Up Daily Mineral Sunscreen. It's a broad spectrum SPF 35, and it's around 20 pounds or $25. It's non-nano, oil-free, so it does feel a little drier on the skin, which would be the only downside. But when I used it a couple of years ago, I found it to be a very good all-rounder. Lastly, as a good all over sunscreen that you can also use on your face, Sun Bum is a really good option. Its mineral sunscreen lotion is around $17 for 88 milliliters, but 33 pounds for the same amount on Amazon UK, so more expensive here. It feels a little heavier and stickier to begin with, but dries and settles on the skin. There is a bit of a cast, but not as much as the Baby Ganics. I find it slightly irritating on the face though, whereas baby gannets can be slathered all over. Sunbum do a slightly different tinted formula for the face and I see this brand as another good all-rounder. It's a nicely formulated, high-performing product. So that's the end of my list. I'm sure some of you will also have some good suggestions. So do please share them in the comments below. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, then by hitting subscribe along with the notification bell, you'll be able to keep up with my weekly episodes, including the Honest Channel podcast, 
which is shared here on YouTube, as well as other podcast platforms. And for more information and advice around skincare and healthy aging, head over to my website, honest.scott, scroll down to the bottom of any page, and you can sign up for my monthly newsletter where I round up all the latest content from me across my platforms. But for now, thanks for being here today. Thank you.